Here's a question about a rocket that has a motor that has a certain amount of thrust. We're asked about its acceleration initially and after it's risen to a certain height. Okay, now that sounds to me like a rocket which is taking off off the pad. So it's going to start out with a certain initial acceleration. As the rocket rises, it's burning fuel, and so its mass is decreasing, and so its acceleration is going to increase. But the basic motion diagram is going to look like this. The rocket is starting out on the ground, and then it's moving upward, and as it moves upward, its velocity, velocity is steadily increasing. The velocity vector is getting longer and longer and longer. There's an acceleration which is directed vertically upward. Okay, we know that that's true. There's an upward acceleration for the rocket. Okay? Now let's look at the, at the forces that act on the rocket. Okay? And really, there's only two. We're going to consider the rocket in isolation from everything else in the world. And there's nothing that touches the rocket, but there's a downward weight force. Okay, there's always the downward weight force. And it's near the surface of the Earth. It's just taken off. And so the weight force, the magnitude is just going to be equal to m times g. Okay, so we can definitely say that for this rocket. But there's also a thrust force. And the thrust force comes from this. The rocket is burning fuel, and so it's exerting hot gases. And since it's exerting, uh, since it's uh, expelling these hot gases, there's an upward thrust force that acts on the rocket. Okay, so there's a downward weight force. There's an upward thrust force. So now, if we make a free body diagram, it's really simple. These are the only two forces that act on the rocket: it's the upward thrust force, it's the downward weight force. And I can draw a free body diagram with just a y-axis. That's all we need to consider because there's only two forces that act and both of them are acting vertically. There's a downward weight force, okay, like so. Now we know the acceleration is upward and so we know that the net force must be directed upward as well. And since the net force is directed upward, the thrust force has to exceed the weight force. And that makes sense. We know that the thrust force has to be bigger than the weight force Otherwise, the rocket is never going to make it off of the launch pad. So the thrust force is bigger than the weight force, and it's directed upward. And so our free body diagram looks like this. But now let's take Newton's second law and apply it to this vertical motion. And it looks like this. The sum of the y components of the forces is equal to m times the y acceleration. Okay? Now let's think about this. The y forces have a thrust force which acts upward and a weight force which acts downward. And so the sum of the y components of the forces, the net force, magnitude, is just equal to the thrust force minus the weight force. But the weight force is just equal to m times g. And that is equal to m times a, where a is the acceleration of the rocket. And I'm going to drop the y subscript just to make things a little bit simpler for writing. So this is a basic working equation that I can use when I proceed to solve. And there's two phases that we have to consider. First off, we're interested in the rocket's initial upward acceleration. Now let's take this relationship and rewrite it this way. m times a, mass times acceleration, is equal to f thrust minus m times g. And that makes sense. The acceleration is the thrust force minus the weight force Kind of that, that, that makes sense here. But I'm going to solve for the acceleration. And if I do that, I just divide both sides of the equation by m. And so I get this. The acceleration is equal to the force from the thrust minus m times g divided by the mass of the rocket. Now we know all of these numbers. We're told in the problem statement that the thrust force is 3.0 times 10 to the fifth. Newtons. We're told in the problem statement that the mass of the rocket is 20,000 kilograms, and we know g is 9.8 meters per second squared. The rocket's near the surface of the Earth. This would be a different question if the rocket got to really high altitude. And so we have all the numbers in hand, and we can just solve for the acceleration. And if we do that, we get 5.2 meters per second squared to two significant figures. Now I'm going to do a quick in process assessment. Notice this. The acceleration is 5.2 meters per second squared initially. We're told 
In part B, that after the rocket has gone up to an altitude of five kilometers, the acceleration is increased to six meters per second squared. And so this number should be less than six. In fact, it is. So, so far, so good. Everything seems to be working. Now, as the mass of the rocket gets smaller, okay, the weight force is going to decrease. The thrust force is going to stay the same. So the net force on the rocket will get bigger. And since the net force is getting bigger and the mass is getting smaller, we expect the acceleration to increase. And in fact, the acceleration does increase. And we can calculate the mass of the rocket when the acceleration gets up to 6 meters per second squared. And we'll do that by taking our basic working equation again. M times A is equal to F thrust minus M times G. But I'm going to rewrite it this way. I'm going to gather the terms that contain M. MA plus M times G is equal to F thrust. Okay? And I'm going to write it then this way. M times A plus G is equal to F thrust. Then I can rewrite that equation this way. M is equal to F thrust divided by A plus G. And you can see an increasing acceleration implies a decreased mass. And actually, we have everything we need to solve for the mass of the rocket because we know the thrust force. We assume that it stays constant at 3.0 times 10 to the fifth newtons. Okay, we weren't told that it changes. G is still 9.8 meters per second squared. The rocket hasn't gotten that high yet. And the acceleration in this phase of the motion is 6.0 meters per second squared. And so we have everything we need to be able to calculate the mass of the rocket. And if we do that, we get the mass of the rocket is 18,990 kilograms. Notice that I've kept a couple of extra significant figures because it's an intermediate stage of the calculation. But we weren't asked for the mass of the rocket. We're asked for the mass of the fuel that it's burned. Now this number, 18,990 18, kilograms, is less than the initial mass of the rocket, which is 20,000 kilograms. And the difference is the fuel that's been burned. And the difference in the two masses is 1,010 kilograms, or rounding to two significant figures. The decrease in mass of the rocket is 1,000 kilograms, that must correspond to the mass of fuel that's been burned. And since the acceleration hasn't gone up that much, we don't expect the mass of the rocket to change by that much. So again, our assessment says, so far so good. The problem is working the way that we think it should, and our ultimate answers mirror our expectations of the way the world works.